Uh, my name is Alex Town, and today we're in Portland, Oregon at Pine State Biscuits, and I am going to show you guys the sweet potato biscuit recipe. These are our special wintertime biscuits. We are going to start with one and three quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Next we go to our brown sugar, and we're going to use two tablespoons. Then for baking powder, we're going to use two and a half teaspoons. Salt, we're going with one teaspoon. And baking soda, we're going with one half teaspoon. So now I'm going to whisk together the dry ingredients. Um, make sure they're all incorporated. The brown sugar tends to clump up a little bit, so it's good to get a whisk in there, but also get your hands in there. For our butter, I'm going to be using uh, Tillamook unsalted sweet cream butter. And we are going to be grating it into our dry mix today. It's six tablespoons, um, which is also three ounces. Then I like to be uh, exact, so I'm gonna weigh out my butter. But feel free to use um, six tablespoons. After the butter is um, in your dry mix, make sure that you get the flour on it so that it doesn't clump together into one big mass. Now we're going to move on to our wet mix. So earlier today, we roasted our sweet potatoes at 375 degrees for anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes. We took them out of the oven, let them cool just a little bit, and then we pureed them with minced ginger, salt, pepper, and a little bit of orange juice just to kind of create an emulsion. And now I'm going to weigh it out, but at home, um, this is three quarters of a cup, but I use about 230 grams just to be a little bit more precise. Now we're going to add one quarter cup or buttermilk, let's see, and one quarter cup of orange juice. And make sure that the wet mix gets completely incorporated with a whisk. So now I pretty much just add the wet mix into the dry mix and start um, folding the flour in over the puree mix. I like to use a bowl scraper for this. At home, if you don't have that, I would say just a wooden spoon would suffice. The key here is to not um, overmix it, as you might think at first. So we're looking just until the flour has been incorporated. And no further at this point. All right, now I'm gonna clear a little bit of space here. So make sure that you have a lightly dusted work surface. Not too much flour, just enough to keep it from sticking to the counter. And at this point, I like to flour my hands a little bit. So I'm flattening the dough out just a bit and I'm gonna fold it over on itself in order to work the dough just a bit more and to create layers so that when it hits the oven, hits the steam and the heat, it's going to start rising as much as possible. At this point, we are going for a certain height. Um, you want, I would say, at least an inch. About an inch is, is, would be a good height. I also like to pick up my dough and kind of release it from the surface every now and then to make sure that when I cut it and put it on this, that it doesn't start pulling back on itself, in which case the biscuits will end up a little bit smaller. Got one, two, and three. So we have three biscuits here. Um, feel free to use the rest of this dough, fold it back in on itself, smash it in, go back to that one inch height, and keep stamping them out so you have no dough left. So here at Pine State, we uh, like to put our biscuits in uh, on our top rack for eight minutes. And after eight minutes, we will switch them down to the bottom rack for 10 minutes to finish them off. Sometimes I'll, I'll lift them up a little bit to see if the insides are done or not, and if it's done, then it's ready to be buttered. So here we are. I have a lot of butter here at home. You would just need just a couple tablespoons probably, and uh, just brush it on top, and what that does is um, creates a little bit more flavor and it ensures that the biscuit remains nice and tender.